A few years ago I released or uploaded a video for Total Beginners. So the idea of that video was I remembered back to when I got my first guitar and I knew nothing. And that was to take you from that place where you know nothing to a place where you know what all the guitar does and you've got some exercises and some chords to practice. So because that was a few years ago I've had a lot of questions from people that have watched the video and I've also been asked about other beginner techniques that could move from that video onto like a second stage video for beginners. So that is what this video is aiming to do. So the things I'm going to cover in this video are string bending, string skipping, playing without looking. A lot of people have asked me about how to do that because as soon as you stop looking at what string you're playing, you get confused and you start picking the wrong string. Sliding, vibrato, bar chords, legato, and a few different tools that will help you to improve and will also make your playing more fun. So before we get started, my first tip for all beginning guitar players is never play with boxing gloves on. So it's much harder when you're wearing them. So if you're wearing boxing gloves, stop mucking about, take it off, and let's begin. Right then, so one of the biggest questions I've been asked is how do I pick without looking and change strings when I'm not looking? The only answer to that is practice, unfortunately. There's no um, secret recipe or magic bullet, but I can make it easier for you. So, I would suggest if you're trying to learn picking without actually looking at what you're doing with your right hand or your left hand if you're a lefty, is practice just on two strings. If you try and practice a whole scale or something, it's going to be harder. So just pick a pattern and make it the same pattern on two strings. So for example, and then practice that on just two strings. So and it doesn't have to be that pattern, that's just an example. But I'm just playing five, seven, eight. So you could do five, six, eight, five, six, seven, whatever you want to play. So practice the same pattern. Just on two consecutive strings. When that feels a bit more natural, move on to the next couple of strings. Then try putting three strings together. The important thing here is to use, I mean if you want to play a scale, that's absolutely fine, but then you've got to think about what you're doing with your left hand and your right hand. So my advice would be practice the same pattern on each string so that it's easier and you have only got to think about what you're doing with one hand at a time. And then when your right hand starts feeling more fluid, then you can start playing more complicated things. Another thing I've been asked is what is string bending? So string bending is simply where you take a note on the fretboard and you bend the string by pushing it or pulling it down and bend it up to a different pitch. So when you push it up, the pitch will go up and when you put it down, the pitch will also go up. And the reason is that the string is just stretching and that's why it's going a higher pitch. Regardless of whether you're pushing it or pulling it, it's still the same thing. So a really good exercise for this is to take a note and I'd suggest somewhere between the 12th and the 5th fret is a good place to start because if you bend down here you've got the nut there which makes it tighter. You can still do it but it's harder and if you do it up here then the frets are closer together so it's a bit more difficult. So I'd pick somewhere between the 5th and the 12th fret and I would bend up and practice bending up a semitone. So the way to do that, let's say we're going to bend the 8th fret of the B string and we're going to bend it up to the 9th fret. So first of all, play your reference note, which is the 9th. Then we're going to bend, and if you put your thumb over the top of the neck like this, 
and then push it up until you hear that same note. A really good way of doing this is if you've got a tuner pedal then you can literally plug into your tuner and bend until you see that pitch. Ooh, it's a bit sharp there. Ooh. Okay, so once you've done a semitone, try a tone. So you're going to bend from 8 on the B up to 10. minor third as well so you're going to bend from eight up to the eleventh fret this is quite a hard one and you need to work I would concentrate on one semitone and two semitone bends before you try this because it will hurt your fingers and then check that you've got the bend right by playing the note again so again, try this on all of the strings. And that's another little thing you can do there, is bend and then release. So I'm bending it up, but I'm keeping my finger on there. And then releasing it down to its original pitch. So when you're on the, the top three strings, I would suggest pushing it up. And when you're on the bottom three strings, I would suggest pull it down because you've got more neck to bend up into or bend down into. For example, if I try and pull down on a high E string, I'll just choke it out. And the same with a B. You won't get very far. So you want to push up on the top three strings and down when you're on the bottom three strings. Another tip when you're bending is if you bend with your little finger and your third finger, this one and this one, then you can push, use your other three fingers or other two fingers or other three fingers behind to give it extra strength and make sure you've got your thumb over the top. So if I just try and bend with that finger, it's pretty tough. Put my thumb over the top, a bit easier. But if I stick those three thing fingers on the string, on the same string, and use all of it to push up, it's a piece of cake. So that's another little technique for you to try. And again, try semitone, tone, and minor third bends on all the strings. So, next technique is to try is what's called legato playing, also known as hammer-ons and pull-offs. So, what we're going to do here, instead we're going to play the same pattern on the B and the E string. So we're going to play 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8. But instead of picking each note, only going to pick the first note that we play on each string. So for example, I'm going to pick the fifth fret, then this hand is not playing. The only thing this hand is doing is muting the strings that I'm not playing. So we're going to play five, and then we're going to what's called hammer, because it's like a hammer hitting on the seventh, little finger on the eight, and then the same on the B, five, seven, eight. So we're doing two lots of hammers. Then we're going to do what's called a pull-off. So you can pick this one again when you're on the eighth. And we're playing eight, seven, five. But what we're doing there, again, I'm not picking, I'm only picking the first note. Okay, so as you can tell, when you don't mute the other strings, it's quite noisy. So, and again, you can practice that pattern on all of your strings. So 
So a tip for pulling off here, if you just lift your finger straight off, so I'm so not used to doing it, hang on. Okay, then it'll be quite quiet. So you're almost, you're almost flicking. And you're almost using this finger to pull the string down a little bit. Okay, so. So all those notes were played without the pick, so I'm just literally. using finger strength and again that will come over time so if you're not good at it straight away you won't be but practice that's another good little pattern so five six five seven five eight Again, I'm only picking that first note. And again, don't worry about being fast, just concentrate on making it sound accurate. You know, if you're getting things like, you know, that's, you might as well start again and slow down. And that was a terrible example, but I'm going to leave it in there because that's the kind of guy I am. Another little technique that we're going to look at is sliding on strings. So we're going to practice this. So play the third note on the B string and we're going to slide the finger. So keep the finger on the string and we're going to slide up to the fifth fret. Then we're going to do the same thing backwards. So five down to three. First finger. Now we're going to change and do the same thing with the second finger. Now we're going to do the same thing with the third finger. Same thing with the fifth finger. Now, as you practice this on every string, until it's fluent, because you want, you know, there will be times when you want to slide, and you're going to be practicing all over the neck at some point so that's your first exercise three to five on each of those strings then we're going to try and play the pentatonic scale which I believe I taught you in the first beginners lesson practice that on the pentatonic scale as well and then build that up over time and again don't worry about playing it fast just try and get it to sound half decent and then build up speed over time so the next thing we're going to look at is string skipping so string skipping is simply where you skip a string so here I'm going to play in C chord just a regular C chord, the same that one that you learned on the first beginner's lesson. And what we're going to do, we're going to play 
the strings, but we're not going to play them in sequence. We're going to play so we're going to pick string two or five, whichever way you look at it. So two, four, three, five, four, six. Then we're going to do the other way around. Six, four, five, three, four, two. So we can do that with a C chord. Then we're going to change to an A minor chord. slightly differently so we're going to play an E minor so now we're, because we're on an E minor we're starting on the bottom string so we're going to pick six or uh, one three two four three five four sorry three no four <laughs> six then we're going to go six four five Three, four, two, three, one. So put that as a little drill that you can practice as well. So use chords that start on the A string and use chords that start on the bottom E string. So you could use G. You can also use chords that start on the D string, so D major. And again, you don't have to pick in that order. You can pick as long as you're skipping at least one of the strings. fine and it will work out so have a go at that little drill as well so next we're going to look at vibrato so vibrato is where you make the string vibrate a little bit so you can hear that okay there are different ways of doing vibrato so some people do this is like a down and up vibrato you can do an up and down sounds the same but it's just a slightly different movement some people do a side to side vibrato so practice various different types so I would again again I would practice on each finger so Another tip we hear is try and practice your vibrato so that you can do it in time with the beat. So if the beat is like one and two and one and two and okay, or and get it in time with a bit so a good thing to practice with a metronome so practice with your first finger second finger third fourth and practice down and up vibrato and side to side practice it on different strings and with different fingers. So now let's have a look at a few bar chords because that's a question I get asked a lot. So I find the easiest way to teach bar chords is to play a regular chord. So let's play an E major. Now normally you would play that with your first finger and your two middle fingers. 
we're going to do, we're going to use our middle finger on the G string and then our third and fourth finger on the D and A string. So now we're going to move that up to the sixth fret. Okay. So your middle finger will be on the sixth, your third and fourth finger will be on the seventh fret. And you should get that chord. Now what we're going to do is use this first finger and we're going to play the fifth fret. We're going to hold that down. So play your E chord, move up to the sixth and add that chord. Sorry, add that finger, not the chord. Take your finger off. Come back down, back up to six, add the first finger, take the first finger off, now the reason we're doing it like that is because if you just try to play bar chords all the way, your finger will, or your hand and your wrist will soon get really really tired. So it's better to practice it this way so that it doesn't get tired but you're still getting that practice of swapping in between chords. Next we're going to use a C shape chord. We're going to do the same thing, instead of playing it uh, there, we're going to use our third finger, sorry middle finger on the B string, third finger on the D, little, little finger on the A. Now this time we're going to move up to the 8th fret. And we're going to use our 1st finger on the 7th to bar. Take it off. Back down. Now we're going to play an A minor shape. Again, we're going to use our second, third, and fourth fingers and not the first. Bring it back up to the sixth bar off. Okay, so now you can try putting those three chords together. So the last one we're going to do is an A shaped chord. Okay, so normally you play that like that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to play that A chord. And we're only going to play the middle four strings. And then we're going to move that up. first finger to play the fifth fret of the A. And that's a little technique to practice bar chords. So each day practice that for 10-15 minutes and then pretty soon you won't need to play the open part first you just be able to go straight in to your bar chords um, there are obviously, obviously a lot more bar chords but as this is a beginner's lesson we're just going to concentrate on those shapes to begin with so now let's have a look at a few tools that will help you so first of all clip on tuners so this little puppy here, literally, you clip it onto your headstock, turn it on, and then you play a note, 
and it will tell you if you're in tune or not. So next up is something called a fret wrap. So this one is by a company called Groove Gear, who are awesome. So basically, you stick that on your fretboard. It's got Velcro on it, so you literally just put it on to the tightness that you need. And it kind of mutes your strings. So when you're doing things like legato, don't have all those strings ringing out. So if I take that off, until you've learned some good technique with your right hand to mute the strings, so you can hear we've got all those little notes going around. So that fret wrap kills those. Next up are capos or capos. So these ingenious little devices you can clip onto your guitar. So if I just play an E chord, stick one of these on. So they will um, increase the pitch depending on how high you go or how low you go will reduce the pitch. So really good for practicing songs in different keys, or if you like to sing when you're playing and you can't sing in open tuning, stick one of those on and... sort you out. The next thing I highly recommend is a looper pedal. A looper pedal will basically allow you to record something onto it and then practice over the top of that recording. So here's an example of just an E minor chord. So that's now going. And that is really useful for practicing and getting your timing improved and all around excellent things. There are lots of different brands of looper pedals on the market, so have a look and see which one you think will be best for you. Something else I'd recommend is get yourself a variety of different types of pick because you may find that a certain pick you really get on with and other picks just don't help your playing so I would suggest get a variety of different picks and see which ones you find feel the best for your particular style. 